and its head glitched. We know that at the beginning of the game, during the main show that every kid comes to the Pizzaplex for, Freddy ends up glitching and ruining the show. It's as if it was his fault that he glitched. At least it seems like that when Vanessa was blaming him. But ultimately, we assume that this glitch is the reason Freddy isn't trying to capture us. But this glitch seemingly also is what really sets this whole game in motion, and what results in the ability to end with the true ending. Since without that glitch, Gregory wouldn't have hid inside Freddy, and then he probably would have been caught and subsequently killed by Vanny, most likely. Or whatever she was doing with these kids. like you using them to power Afton or whatever. In at 9, replaced. Thanks to the chat that Vanessa has with Freddy in the parts and service room, as well as the newspaper clippings we get in the van ending, we know that once Freddy leaves the Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex, Monty ends up replacing him. I don't know why, thanks to a point later on, but my original theory was that they couldn't build another one. However, it's probably just because they knew he wasn't under Afton's control anymore, and they probably didn't want to risk getting another Freddy to do the same thing, whether it's because of the glitch alone, or if perhaps it's because Glamrock Freddy is possessed by Michael is up for debate, but if he was possessed, I doubt that they would know that. Or if Afton did know that, I guess he wouldn't want another Freddy because it wouldn't be the one with his son inside, which could also make sense. And it ain't upgraded. At the end of the true ending, we have a fully upgraded Freddy with our player character. The first time we have an animatronic on our side, and this will continue to be the case in future games, as long as we play as Gregory again, because Freddy seems to be sticking by our side. Which is honestly a whole other topic for another video. Like, if we do end up moving forward as Gregory with Freddy by our side, obviously he now has all the issues like hourly recharging fixed somehow, but he also has like Roxy's eyes, Monty's claws, and Chica's voice box. So we could basically do anything and the animatronics wouldn't really be able to stop us, especially because we have Monty's overpowered fists of calamity or whatever they're called. Number seven, fight back. If that battery we see on the screen while inside the Glamrock Freddy animatronic is a health bar, what does that mean? Well, it means that we can be hurt as Glamrock Freddy, or as Gregory, or both maybe, but it also could imply that for the first time ever, we can potentially actively fight back against our assailants, which would be super cool. Typically in the FNAF franchise, the survival tactics at our disposal have been a lot more passive, with us not even being able to run away from our attackers in most cases. Or move. There's been a lot of us sitting at a desk, pressing buttons, <laughs> looking around. That's about it. In Security Breach, it seems we can actively run and hide, but how cool would it be if we were also empowered by being able to fight back? Even if it's only temporarily when we're teamed up with Glamrock Freddy, that would still be pretty awesome. And at 6, good. At the end of FNAF Security Breach, luckily, Freddy is still on our side. Something that I thought was impossible when the game first came out. But for the first time, we have an animatronic on our side and still on our side at the end of the game. I said the games could go anywhere now with all the possibilities introduced by such a vague ending, but with an animatronic on our side, the possibilities are even grander than I originally realized. Like, the sheer possibilities? It's astronomical. This could in reality be the start of the end of FNAF. If Glamrock Freddy is set on making sure that nobody ends up vanishing because of Fazbear Entertainment again, bro, I mean like imagine Glamrock Freddy like having like a press conference or something telling people not to go to the Fazbear restaurants. That would be hilarious. Number 5. Detected. If the maintenance is more unscheduled and unusual in terms of how the Mega Pizza Plex and its animatronics usually operate, this wouldn't be too surprising based on something else that we see in the State of Play trailer and also involving Glamrock Freddy. There is a part of the trailer where we seem to see from Glamrock Freddy's perspective where he drops his microphone as he falls down. As if from his own point of view, we see a notification that seems to come up on, I guess, his view? his, what he sees, which declares that a child has been detected. At least that's what it seems to be declaring. It says detected, and there's a little picture of a person. I'm assuming it's a child. It could be a full grown person, I don't know. But still, if it is a child, this would be a revelation. Granted, if Glamrock Freddy was performing, I, you know, I assume there are lots of children and adults around. So what this means, we don't, Exactly, no. Could it be that Gregory is already hiding inside him and that causes him to malfunction? Or could it be a child appearing on stage that wasn't supposed to be here and that causes the malfunction? Either Gregory or it could be someone else? Could this be another malfunction turned bite? So is it possible that, you know, Glamrock Freddy bit someone and that's why? 
he's malfunctioning. Is that why the animatronics need maintenance? Well, the theory that this detected notification has caused the malfunction could explain that scheduled maintenance. It also creates a lot of other questions for us to ponder the answers to and the theories for. I like this theory because it's a theory that gives us more questions. And I love when you're like, oh, maybe this fits here. And then it's like, oh, but then like, what about these things? That's my favorite thing about FNAF. And four sees Vanny. We know at the very beginning of the game, Freddy is unable to see Vanny for whatever reason. Since when we ask, what the hell was that? He responds with, that's a fountain. However, thanks to the newly installed eyes we got from um, Roxy's accident, Freddy, as we see in the rooftop ending, can now see Vanny. I don't know why Roxy's eyes let Freddy see Vanny. Like if the animatronic seeing you was an issue, why not prevent them all from seeing you? But Okay, so after the game we know that Freddy is now on some super mega ultra eye level and they're going to burn a hole in my soul and then make me weep for salvation. I don't know what I'm talking about really, but look, okay, Freddy at the end of Security Breach can see things in a whole new light, meaning that if he is with us for the 10th game, we are going to have some seriously dope and potentially even overpowered abilities. But frankly, I bet the next game forgets all about the upgrades or just doesn't have Freddy or Gregory in it. Number three, not so vengeful spirit. On the other hand, as we don't have a lot of intel yet on this, it is equally possible that Freddy could be possessed indeed. However, in this case, he still doesn't seem to be acting vengefully here. Unless the vengeance shows up in a different way. Many times we've played as more grown up, adult security guards in this franchise. I think this might be the first time a leading protagonist, or at least what we assume to be the protagonist, is not an adult but is instead a child with Gregory. And so it could be possible that if there is a spirit within Glamrock Freddy, and if the spirit also belongs to a child, as so many of these spirits in this franchise do, that they inherently want to help Gregory because they recognize he is also a child in peril. Like like they once were. If this is the explanation behind Glamrock Freddy's seemingly helpful and protective nature, then it's likely they are the only animatronic who is possessed, as the others seem more mindlessly hellbent on harming or capturing Gregory. Either that or these other animatronics are possessed, but something is manipulating them. But ultimately, in a number two, operational. In the end of Security Breach, Freddy is still operational. Somehow. Again, despite the fact that he should need to recharge every hour. Unless the whole after nearly taking control control of Freddy thing fixed his recharging issue or something similar unless they took the van which was never shown in the ending because you know they had to run out of a collapsing cave. I genuinely don't know how Freddy at this point is still operational so if any of you have any ideas or something please let me know in the comments because he shouldn't have been able to make it to that hill. The charger in the basement could not have been that powerful especially because he has to get in it multiple times during that final battle. I, I seriously have no idea how that works. And finally, in at number one, ahead of the game. While he is fully assembled and operational at the end of the true ending of the game, in the Princess Quest ending, he's only ahead, since the rest of him was destroyed by Vanny. So, while this may not be the case after the canon ending, it's known now that Glamrock Freddy can operate without the rest of his body. In this scenario, he only really needs his head to function. And interestingly enough, he seemingly also doesn't really need his head, since in the parts and service room, his body can jump scare you while you're reattaching it. But, like, his head won't be connected to his body, which while it is one of the funniest jump scares in the game, indicates that his head and his body operate separately, which can have a whole other set of implications lore-wise that again, I don't want to talk about. Firstly, we have to establish whether this would be something new or if it would have been this way since the start, and there are a few indicators that might surprise you. In my latest playthrough, the Security Breach But It's Ruined by Mods video that released on Saturday, April 2nd on this channel, I made a note to point out that Freddy doesn't really seem to care when you get locked inside the pizza plex. He also seemed to care more about the fact that you got a crappy Mr. Hippo magnet as your free gift, and sounds more disappointed about that than the whole locked in and might get killed by a serial killer thing. Which begs the question, is he really all that disappointed? Obviously if he was blatantly evil he would have just turned us over to Vanessa, but if he was really crafty he would gain our trust first. After all, he should have Glitch Trap's code inside him, right? Well, let's look at what he does before the doors close. He sends us to get a pass in order to free him from his green room, and then everything seems to go well. But then, for some random reason, without ever mentioning this before, he tells us that he senses we are broken and that he needs to bring us to medical so that we can get fixed up or something like that. Whether this was meant to be a nod to crying child or not doesn't matter in this case, okay? The point here is that it doesn't actually do anything. 
We get our run-in with Vanessa, that later gets turned into a TikTok meme. But other than that, we stay the same. We don't get healed, we don't get a band-aid, because we could have had it from the start. We get in that booth, instantly turn around, and move the curtain to peep outside and watch that scene. After that, Freddy doesn't mention how we're still broken, and I don't know about you, but me standing in a booth isn't really gonna heal me, okay? It, it seems odd, if you ask me. Especially since now, with that little pit stomp, even if you go full steam ahead making no stops, sprinting the whole time, you can't make it out of the doors. That one little interaction is the 30 seconds that we needed in order to escape out the front doors, but thanks to Freddy, now we don't make it. And you can't use his programming as an excuse for this, either. Because if we want to use programming as evidence, this man was supposed to be controlled by Afton's virus, and the glitching out should have messed him up. Plus, his coding isn't designed to scan children that are literally inside his body. If he picked up on the injury when Gregory was outside of his stomach for the first time and he was scanning us, why not take him to medical instantly, or as soon as you got out of the green room? And again, why make it seem like your coding is letting you scan a kid that's inside you, when nobody should be in there? Unless that's the point. What if Afton's virus did grab a hold of Freddy and just made everything seem like it was fine? Having an animatronic protect you and gaining the kid's trust is a lot better than just nabbing him out of nowhere. Plus, I mean, there would have been plenty of times this kid could have been gotten, particularly when Freddy gets grabbed by the Moondrop animatronic right outside of Parts and Service. You're telling me that Moondrop, the daycare attendant, told Vanessa that Freddy was in the parts and service room, but didn't mention that we were in the recharge station right next to parts and service. I mean, he knew, like he waved at us while taking Freddy away. But Vanessa knows that just grabbing Gregory won't accomplish Afton's true goal. So instead, what do they do? They stage a fake interrogation where Freddy once again looks like the good guy, and then she leaves, through the most inconvenient way for her possible. Why would she leave to Rockstar Row when she could easily come our way and then head to the main atrium? That's where Gregory was. That's where all the animatronics have been spotting him. And then, after Vanessa leaves Freddy in parts and service so that his casing can be put on a new endo after corporate gives the go-ahead, she doesn't seem to be suspicious that he's walking around Rockstar Row. Like, who would have repaired him if not Gregory? There is literally no other living human in the Pizzaplex at this point, and the whole containment cylinder thing is so that it protects humans on the outside. Why is Vanessa so nonchalant about Freddy walking around? It was something that confused me in my first playthrough. I figured that Vanessa would just pull us out of Freddy if we got too close, but no. And a reasonable explanation to that is that she isn't sus because she knows the plan. And also, it's worth noting that Afton has spent all this time in a burnt down pizza plex that also contained his daughter, who has pulled this exact same scheme on us prior to this game, okay? So he could have picked up on it from her, either while they were burning, while she was trying to impress him, or maybe if she is controlling the blob and it's not actually Funtime Freddy. Just saying. And maybe I'm wrong about that, okay? It's entirely possible. I mean, after all of this, it is a FNAF game, right? Where not everything makes sense for the sake of the story that Scott wants to tell. But what about the post game? What about after we supposedly end Afton? What then? Is Freddy on the up and up? Or is there enough of Afton in there for us to be in danger? Well, it's actually a pretty interesting idea, since there is the distinct possibility that Afton is now controlling Freddy. Sure, when we haven't defeated Afton's body and he ends up possessing Freddy, we get killed instantly and Freddy gets purple eyes. However, in the actual ending to this boss fight, we supposedly stop Burn Trap. But then, the area around us starts collapsing. What if Afton was using Freddy as a means of escape, when he knew that his situation was dire? I mean, honestly, if we, if we think about this, Afton was downloading his consciousness wirelessly into Glamrock Freddy while we were fighting him. That was the whole point of the fight. 
But, but would it really reset to zero once he stops and tries again? Or would it just be like pausing a download? Honestly, with the kind of buffoonery in this series, I don't think we can discount the possibility that Appen was simply just putting a pause on the download and never to eventually still take over Freddy and potentially spend time with his robot son. Or maybe just escape into the world once more. Um, but like, seriously, he, he was transferring his consciousness into Glamrock Freddy by putting his hand on a monitor and not even a monitor like a dinosaur monitor at that I don't think that we can like just go like oh no he's not in uh, he's not in Freddy he's dead he's gone forever that's no no if he can transfer his brain from an animatronic into another animatronic through touching a computer screen where he can see the guy that's no, if you think that Afton's done, you have not been paying attention to this series at all. And if you think that Glamrock Freddy is safe, again, you don't know the series in the slightest. I hate that I was right about Freddy, because in the, eventually it's gonna be revealed that he's evil, I know it. Number 10, our pal Glamrock Freddy. Based on the newest trailer and even the merch leading up to its release, it now seems highly likely and even pretty obvious that Glamrock Freddy will be our friend, ally, and potentially savior, and that for the first time in forever, we'll actually have an animatronic on our side as opposed to all of them turned against us. Not going to lie, I was kind of hoping when this moment came in the games that I'd get to team up with Foxy. Not necessarily Freddy, but hey, I'll take what I can get. It's still really cool to be teaming up and befriending any animatronic in these games. Of course, not everything is always as it seems in trailers, which can be edited to be purposefully misleading, so the mystery and story of the game remains intact for that gameplay experience. So while it seems like Glamrock Freddy will be working with us and not against us, we might not want to be too quick to trust him just yet. Number 9. Don't Trust Freddy While Glamrock Freddy does appear to be friendly in the newest State of Play trailer, promising to help Gregory escape, that doesn't mean that he's our friend. At this point, fans of FNAF should be used to the classic misdirect when it comes to someone seeming to be our ally, only to betray our trust. After all, we've seen this to a certain extent in both Sister Location and Pizzeria Simulator as well, with us thinking we knew it was up with both Circus Baby and Cassette Man, who of course turns out to be Henry, who has used you to put his own plans in motion. And we all know what happens with Circus Baby. You get scooped! Based on the history of trusted traitors, I think it's fair for us to go into Security Breach at least being a little bit cautious of anyone who seemingly wants to help us. So although he seems like an ally, is he really? Probably. But maybe not! And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more Security Breach theories as we get closer to the release of this game, it's finally coming soon, I'm so excited, please be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Health Battery? <laughs> Question mark? Is that what this is? This is more of a minor or I suppose more functional theory? if that's a thing. Less to do with lore, more to do with gameplay and mechanics when it comes to Glamrock Freddy and our interaction with the animatronic. It seems as though while playing as Gregory and hiding within Glamrock Freddy, we'll be able to control the animatronic. As seen in the State of Play trailer after Gregory climbs into Glamrock Freddy, we seem to be able to see from the animatronic's point of view, either implying that we are playing as Gregory controlling the animatronic or we're playing as Glamrock Freddy who is actually actively protecting Gregory of their own accord. Because, yeah, Gregory seems to be like this inside their stomach, so unless he can stand up, I, I don't really know how you pilot that suit. At the bottom of the player screen, we see a battery whose full charge is divided into five segments. This could either be the amount of power we have in terms of controlling and using the animatronic, or it could be a health bar. And it's seven reproduced. We now know thanks to an interview between Daco and someone working for Illumix, it was revealed that Illumix does indeed plan to add the Glamrock animatronics into FNAF AR Special Delivery, which opens a whole other can of lore worms that I don't really want to get into, but I guess technically I have to. Firstly, why weren't they there to begin with if these games are supposed to take place at the same time? Second, why hasn't Fazbear Entertainment shut down the Special Delivery project, especially after the Pizzaplex started getting missing children and they know that some kid ended up hacked
hacking the animatronics. No idea. And third, if they have enough materials to make a new Glamrock Freddy and ship him out to kids all over the world, why don't they remake him for the actual band instead of replacing him with Monty, like we see in the van ending? Because like I said earlier, they couldn't remake a Freddy, but now they can once they add these characters to FNAF AR, since they, they have to ship them out to whoever wants one. So how are they doing that if they won't rebuild one for the Pizzaplex? Number 6. Scheduled Maintenance Something that I thought was very interesting about the State of Play trailer for Security Breach is that it seems as though Glamrock Freddy and the crew are not animatronics who appear on stage each night. At least not currently. In the trailer we learn that Freddy and his band will be taking a few days off from performing actually for scheduled maintenance. The question remains, is this normal scheduled maintenance that happens after each performance or is it unscheduled maintenance that has to happen as a result of something that went wrong in the show? Hmm. And if it's scheduled, what does that mean for Glamrock Freddy's personality? Is it possible that the maintenance, or perhaps lack thereof if he escaped before it happened, is what makes him seemingly help us as Gregory? Halfway through into number 5, possibly possess. There's also a theory going around, or at least recently going around, that Freddy Fazbear in this game is actually possessed by the spirit of one Sir Michael Afton, the son of Purple Guy and the older brother to Crying Child, who some also believe is in this game in the form of Gregory. While this would explain the brother like bond of the two protagonists, this theory isn't 100% confirmed, so for the moment, it's just a theory. A game theory! But the possibility of Michael Afton surviving the FNAF 6 fire and going on to possess Glamrock Freddy actually does make sense, especially given that we've seen everyone else that was in the FNAF 6 fire that contained Remnant still at least partially alive and kicking. Burn Trap is still there, Molten Freddy, Scrap Baby, and the puppet are all in the form of the blob, so it would make sense for Michael, who is also supposed to have perished in that fire to still be alive. Especially because we never see a body. Number 4. Free from Possession With the Glamrock animatronics, although we have theories about their origins, we don't really know anything just yet specifically in terms of where they came from, or you know, how haunted they are. It's therefore possible that Glamrock Freddy, unlike original Freddy or Golden Freddy, may not be possessed. This could perhaps be why he appears to act friendly towards us in the trailers. It could be that because there is, you know, no vengeful spirit within him, that he has no reason to act viciously or violently towards us or anyone else. Instead, he truly does want to make sure children have a safe and fun time at the Mega Pizzaplex, so we might actually get to see and experience what an animatronic behaving the way they were originally intended and created to looks like, or at least how we'd assume they were originally designed to be. Of course, William and possibly Henry could have had some other intentions for how they wanted them to act or their motivations behind what they wanted them to do, but you know, I don't think so. I think originally at least it was about entertaining kids, I think. Getting close to the end of number three, arsonist. Okay, straight up, Freddy seemed a little too keen on burning down the Pizzaplex, if I'm totally honest. Don't get me wrong, we love a little arson in a video game context, but Freddy was basically looking for any excuse to burn the Pizzaplex down. He goes from, the other animatronics are trying to help you, Gregory, I'm a material girl, to burn baby burn real fast. I don't get why he flips so quickly, but like at this point, he still hadn't seen Vanny in the flesh, so like maybe his programming just went berserk, or maybe something else took over. Over, or this could have been William's plan all along. But the biggest possibility is that Freddy has just played too many FNAF games himself and figured that burning the place down would actually destroy everything inside. Number two, Cousin Freddy? My old cousin Glamrock Freddy. What if Glamrock Freddy is actually helping us because he's possessed by a very special spirit? Not just any old spirit, but instead one very close to us is Gregory. What if Gregory is related to one of the victims in some way? It could be a long deceased cousin and to our uncle, who was a victim that ended up being bonded to the animatronic. After all, there have been theories about how this new game will introduce a ton of new characters, so it could also be introducing us to, or at least expanding upon, a new family who will be taking the place of the Aftons when it comes to them being the main focus. If Glamrock Freddy was possessed by a deceased relative of Gregory's, this would definitely explain their intention to help Gregory no matter the cost, and help to strengthen their commitment to help Gregory escape whoever is pursuing them. Likely the other Mega Pizzaplex animatronics, Vanny, and Glitchtrap. Number 1. Friend to the End While we've talked 
talked about Glamrock Freddy's potential motivations for helping us, and even the possibility of him betraying us, we haven't talked about our theories for how this alliance could end up. One of the things that seems likely if he remains loyal is that Glamrock Freddy won't end up surviving this game. After all, if Glitchtrap, aka William Afton, returns an animatronic or in human form to the physical plane of existence, you can bet he won't be happy about Freddy helping Gregory. It seems likely that Glamrock Freddy in the end will be forced to sacrifice himself to save Gregory and help him get away. At least for now. Granted, who knows if Gregory will continue to be safe in the future, after all, this could just be the beginning of his story, even as it might be the end. Glamrock Freddy's. I'm already mourning the loss of him. I'm already like, rest in peace, Glamrock Freddy. You were great. Now you're gone. <laughs>